Hey, happy Sunday. Welcome back. I thought I'd done looking at old footage of nuclear explosions, although they are cool. But a viewer sent me some intriguing information that you need to know about. It was a link to the Lawrence Livermore National Physics Laboratory in California and an interview with the Lawrence Livermore film archivist who talks about hidden secrets in the footage. Wow. The first thing that he told me was they had to make a new film. They wanted super high resolution and super low film ASA rating, <laughs> atom bombs are bright. So the 35 millimeter film that the test footage is shot on was specially made by Kodak and it's about 100 times the silver density of normal film. That means the grain size is minute, but to get that grain size, it's only one ASA. Now, normal film, if you are old like me and remember shooting on 100 ASA, and in fact, I used 400 ASA film all the time. So one ASA, super slow, but super high quality. He actually said Kodak had a stock roughly right, and it was used by microfiche readers for the resolution of those tiny bits of film that digitize things like newspapers. So that's what they used in their high-speed cameras. And that's the other thing. What you're seeing isn't in real time. These were shot with thousands of frames per second. And so it's super slow motion. Of course, <laughs> they needed to film and verify the size so they could measure effects. So photography was very important. But back in the day, how they did it was literally looking at each frame or projecting it, and that was it. Today, the Lawrence Livermore Laboratory can analyze the density of individual areas of the celluloid to get more hidden information. And they found some hidden secrets. The first one that they've discovered is why the explosion gets super bright, then gets darker and you see surface detail and then becomes bright again. And they've worked that out. In fact, this motley pattern that you can see here isn't the fireball. It's a motley pattern on the surface of the shock wave. And the shock wave is so hot that it blocks light going through it. And only when it cools down does the actual fireball of the bomb become visible. So at first you get buff fireball, then it goes dark when it becomes opaque mass by the shock wave. And then the shock wave cools and woof, the fireball becomes bright again. And they figured that out, brilliant. And of course, they talk about the spiky guys. Yeah, and he confirmed that they were X-ray burst from very early nanoseconds of the bomb vaporizing the steel of the guy wires. And as I said, that's what Edward Teller went on to try and utilize in an SDI Star Wars space weapon. Not that it worked. So what's the mystery that he found? Well, the mystery is brilliant. And I've seen this footage many times and just thought, oh, maybe I'm seeing something. Maybe it's not important. But watch this. Did you see those wiggles on those white vertical lines? First of all, the white vertical lines are smoke markers. They're little poof rockets that they put up on the left and the right of the explosion to show how they would be deflected by the expanding shockwave and explosion. But they've only recently seen something really odd. 
long before the shockwave gets anywhere near to deflect and wave the smoke vertical lines, a ripple goes up them. They think it's a refraction issue. You know when you place a pen in a glass of water, it goes in at one angle, then when you see the pen in the water, it changes angle. That's caused by refraction, different densities of air to water. So they think something's happening. As the fireball expands, an invisible refractive index difference goes over the smoke trails. Well, it actually goes between the smoke trails and you, the camera, and you see this woo, this wiggle go up the lines. So the mystery for you today is what causes it? What exactly causes the mysterious wiggle? If you know, tell Lawrence Livermore because the truth is out there.